All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we are talking about rotational motion, a pretty hard unit in high school physics, maybe arguably the hardest unit. And it's not that it's necessarily hard or really complicated, but it's just that a lot of your original thinking of physics is just going to be kind of changed almost into like a kind of like a different dimension, I'd like to say. But once it starts clicking, it should be okay. But anyways, it's going to be very different, I guess, from what we've been doing, but at the same time similar, which is very confusing already. All right. So anyway, let's continue to see what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Okay. So what is rotational motion? So, so far in physics, we have only talked about objects moving linearly or translationally. In this unit, we'll discuss the physics of objects that rotate. So, for example, we talk about this box that moves to the right, or the salt shaker that moves to the left, or this uh, car that was pushed at an angle of 30 degrees. So everything that's kind of moving translationally. Now we're going to be talking about things rotating. So examples of this, office chairs spinning, fans spinning, tires spinning, helicopter blades spinning. So like, for example, this helicopter, uh, it could be just hovering, not moving translationally. So even though it's not moving translationally, its blades are rotating a lot. And that's a lot of what I'm talking about, rotational motion. So physics is actually quite similar, but everything is just going to kind of look confusing. So like I said, it's going to be a little bit weird, but when things start to click, it'll be like, oh, okay, I've done or seen a lot of this before. Okay, so let's move on. So translational motion is described by displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Rotational motion is described by angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. So like if we look at this car, we can see it goes front, backwards, sideways, and everything like that. While if we look at the hands of this clock, we can see that it, even though the clock doesn't move, the hands rotate in a circle. So displacement translation is change in position. In angular terms, it's change in theta. Velocity is velocity. Uh, and for angular terms, we call this omega. Acceleration is this A, acceleration. But in angular terms, we call it alpha, or that's the variable we give it. Okay. Moving on. Uh, measuring rotations. So when objects rotate around themselves, we have a few ways to measure this rotation. One is degrees, which we've been using a lot. Uh, 360 degrees is equal to one full ro uh, rotation. So if something like starts right here and then it goes all the way to the other side, we would say that's 180 degrees. But if it goes all the way in a circle, we would call that 360 degrees. Okay, we've been using that a lot. Radians, we have not been using that often, but uh, it is the one you've probably used a lot in math class, and it's the one we're going to be using a lot in this. So radians, if you start here at 0, you go all the way perpendicular, pi over 2, all the way to the other side is pi, and all the way around is pi, uh, 2 pi, okay? And that's radians. And revolutions, uh, one revolution is equal to one full rotation, which I think makes sense. In this unit, we will primarily be using radians to measure rotations. Okay. So first of all, what is a radian? Not important, but since we're going to be talking about radians so much, I, it's better just to understand where this comes from. So one radian is the angle at which the arc length S has the same length as the radius R. So if this radius, let's say, is 3 meters, that means this distance here from here to here is equal to 3 meters. And that is what a radian is, okay? So if it goes around the same distance as the radius, that is going to be 1 radian. Okay, moving on. Angular displacement and velocity. So angular displacement is equal to how much the object has rotated from its initial position. Okay, so kind of like what I talked about, if it goes from here to here, we can say that has an angular displacement of what, around 150 degrees or I don't know, uh, a little under pi radians. Okay, same thing, change in theta, 
theta final minus theta initial. So this started at zero degrees and maybe it went, um, I don't know, the, it went three radians or 80 degrees or whatever, something like that. Okay. And angular velocity is equal to how fast the object is rotating. So how much did it rotate? What is the change in theta? And how long did it take? Kind of like uh, the change in position divided by time. Okay, so same kind of thing. So radians per second. Okay. And I think that makes sense conceptually. So uh, I'm going to keep going. Some videos to kind of explain it more. So angular acceleration, kind of same kind of thing. Angular acceleration is equal to how much the object's rotation changes over time. So we had before acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over time. Same thing over here. Angular acceleration alpha is equal to the change in angular velocity omega divided by time. So same kind of thing here. Uh, and this is going to be radians per second squared. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, some things just to, to kind of see the similarity of. So we have like linear acceleration and angular acceleration formulas. And what you should notice is they're kind of like the same. So these are kind of like the main formulas that we've seen all this time during physics. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity times acceleration times time. So it's going to be looking exactly the same, but just now in angular mode. So omega final is equal to omega initial or angular velocity final is equal to angular velocity initial plus alpha or acceleration, angular acceleration times time. So same formula. We're just changing everything now to the angular version. Ver version. And you're going to see that with all the formulas. The physics is exactly the same. We're just doing something a little different. Instead of looking at things translationally or linearly, we're looking at things rotate or spinning. Okay, But the physics works exactly the same. Okay, moving on. First example here. Let's get started. A ball starts at rest and rotates to the other side in 4 seconds. If it reaches the other side with an angular velocity of 1.57 radians per second, what was the average angular velocity in this time period? So, at least for the beginning, I want you to kind of think about translationally and translate that <laughs> to rotationally. So, okay, we're looking for average angular velocity. So, first I want you to think, okay, when we're looking for the average angular uh, translational velocity, that was just the total change in position divided by the total time it took. So now you're like, okay, now rotationally, we're just doing, we're changing this V to be omega average. And it's going to be equal to the total change in, instead of position, it's going to be change in theta divided by the total change in time. And then, so we're just going to plug in the same things. Um, so this is going to be equal to, it rotates to the other side. So other side means it rotates pi radians. Okay, 180 degrees or pi. And it takes 4 seconds. So our answer is just pi over 4 radians. But also if we want a more of a numeric number, I guess, we could do 0 0.79 or 0 0.785 radians per second. All right, part B, what is the angular acceleration? Same kind of thing. We want to think about what are the things we know. So we're going to, we're going to same thing we did with kinematics. We're going to write down our known. So it starts at rest, meaning the initial angular velocity is zero. We know it takes four seconds. So time is equal to four seconds. We know it reaches the other side with an angular velocity of 1.57 uh, radians per second. So we know angular uh, final velocity is 1.57 seconds. And what are we looking for? Angular acceleration, alpha. And same exact way we solved it. Okay, we have these four variables. Let's look at our formula sheet and let's see which formula has all four of these variables so we can solve for our unknown. And then we see that alpha is equal to omega final minus omega initial divided by time. And let's plug things in. 1.57 minus 0 divided by time 4 seconds. I'm going to get 1.57 divided by 4. 0 0.39 radians per second squared. Okay. 
So that could have been a lot. It was our first example. It kind of might have been like a bit of like a mind numbing experience. So watch it again. But pretty much I did what I always used to do and just translated it to doing it rotationally. But watch it again if it was kind of a lot because it takes a little while to click. Okay, moving on. So finding distance with rotating objects. So when something rotates, uh, it goes like around and around and spinning in circles and so on and so forth, right? It goes in circles. However, we can, there's also a distance component to it. So something's going around, we can find something kind of called like the arc length, like how much distance did it travel? Sure, it traveled angularly, but there's also a certain distance it travels. And depending on like, you know, the inside of it, like we could travel a certain distance going around a circle over here or over here. Uh, it's going to be different depending on like the radius. So distance is equal to the radius times how much time did it turn. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, the formula distance equals the radius time, the change in data. The further the object is from the axis, the more distance the object travels, the faster it moves, and the more accelerates translationally. So we're going to try an example with this just to make sense of it. So a car with a radius of 0 0.86 meters, uh, a car tire, rotates pi over 2 radians about its axle. A small pebble is stuck in the tread of the tire. Okay, right here. What distance does the pebble travel, arc length, during this rotation? Okay, so let's kind of look at this. So we have a tire here, okay? And then it's going to rotate pi over 2 radians. So we know that this is 0, this is pi, and if it goes all the way around, that's 2 pi. So pi over 2 is going to be from here to like here. And we want to see what, what is this distance. Uh, we also know that the radius of this tire is 0 0.86 meters. All right, so we know the formula. Distance is equal to the radius times the change in theta. Uh, radius is 0.86. Change in theta is equal to pi over 2. And when you're putting pi over 2 in your calculator, make sure to put, whenever you're using pi, I would highly suggest putting everything in parentheses, or else you could get some funky numbers. Um, it just, yeah, the pi number doesn't, or the pi button on your calculator a lot of times doesn't know what you're doing. <laughs> so, but the answer is going to be it travels 1.35 meters. Okay, so for the pebbles to go from here to like here, that's going to be 1.35 meters. Hope that made sense. Moving on. Okay, finding the tangential velocity with rotating objects. So, Something to know as something is spinning, you know, going in circles. Yes, it's moving angularly like we've been talking about. But it's also like if there's a ball attached to the end of a uh, string spinning, there's also going to be a tangential velocity, which we learned about in uniform circular motion. And that tangential velocity is equal to the radius times the angular velocity. So... Yes. So something to know is that, um, let's say I'm going to put these other balls here. Okay. As this thing rotates, it's always going to, each of these points have the same angular velocity. It's always the same. Okay. They're, they're changing their theta. They're changing the angle they're completing in the same amount of time. It takes each of these points here the same amount of time to go all the way around. So they're angular velocity is the same. It's 360 degrees for each of those points to go all the way around, and it's going to take the same amount of time. So their angular velocity is the same. But their velocity tangential is going to be different. Like we talked about in uniform circular motion, the further out you're going, the faster it is. And the more you're going towards the center, the smaller and smaller and smaller the velocity tangential is going to be. Okay. The further the object is from the axis, the more distance the object travels, the faster it moves, and the more it accelerates translation. So let's see an example of this. A ball rotates 6 pi ra radians in 2 seconds. What is its angular velocity? 
Okay, so angular velocity is equal just to the change in theta, how much it has rotated in that amount of time, oh, which is time. Okay, let's plug it in. 6 pi is the amount of rotation. It takes 2 seconds. So this is 3 pi. So it's, it's going to be 9.42 radians per second. Great. Part B. If the edge of the ball is uh, 0.3 meters from the center, how fast is the edge moving at this time? So we want to find this tangential velocity at the edge of this ball. Okay. And we know V tangential is equal to the radius times, uh, whoops, not change the data, times omega. So radius is 0.3. And omega is 9.42. Okay, let's put that in. 9.42 times 0.3. And we get 2.83 meters per second. Okay, that's how fast the edge of the ball is moving. All right, moving on. Uh, okay, same kind of thing here. Tangential acceleration is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration. The further the object is from the axis, the more distance the object travels, the faster it moves, and the more it accelerates translationally. Same kind of explanation as we've been doing, so I'm just not going to go over that again. Okay, moving on. All right, so let's look at this. A four meter long bar starts from rest and rotates through five revolutions with a constant angular acceleration of 30 radians per second squared. How long did it take to make five revolutions? Okay, um, okay, so similar to how we do kinematics, let's write the variables we know. Five, it rotates through five revolutions. That means the change in theta is going to be 5 times 2 pi, which is 10 pi, because it rotates five times. Uh, constant angular acceleration of 30 ra radians per second squared. So angular acceleration is 30 radians per second squared. And it starts from rest. Omega initial is equal to zero. We also know that the bar is four meters long, so we could say radius is four meters, but that's not really going to help us, at least right now. And we're looking for how long, so we're looking for time. So with the kinematic formulas, we want to look at, okay, these are the four variables. What, um, what do we know? No, what do we need to know? <laughs> what do we need to know? What do we know? Uh, which formula has all four of these variables? So we can look at it and then we see that, oh, change in data, omega initial times time, whoops, plus one half alpha time squared. So let's plug this in, 10 pi, this is zero, plus one half, 30 t squared. Uh, I'm not gonna show all the algebra, hopefully you guys all know that by now. Um, but let's see, times 2 divided by 30, square root, and I get 1.45 seconds. Okay. Okay, what was the angular velocity after rotating 5 times? So now we're looking for the final angular velocity. And since we have, now we know what time is, time is equal to 1.45, we should have a few options of formulas we can use to solve for this. I'm just going to use omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha t. But if you want to use a different one, you'll get the same answer. This is going to be 0 plus alpha 30 t 1.45. And let's see what that is. 30 times 1.45. 43.5 radians per second squared. Okay. Oh, sorry, not radians per second squared, radians per second, where this is not acceleration. Okay, moving on. Okay, a four meter long bar below starts with an angular velocity of 40 radians per second and decelerates with a cons at, with, at a constant rate. It stops rotating after 20 revolutions. How fast is the edge of the bar moving initially? Okay, so we know this whole thing is rotating initially at a rate of 40 radians per second. 
we want to know how fast this edge is going before it slows down. So what we should know is it's going the fastest at this edge. As it's like kind of like in the middle, it's going to slow down and it's going to be less and less as we go towards the middle of the axis. Anyway, not too important, but we should know velocity tangential is equal to omega times the radius. So omega is 40. That's how fast it's going at the beginning before it slows. And it's all the way at the edge. So that's going to be 4 meters. So this is going to be 160 meters per second. Okay. Part B is what was the angular acceleration of the bar? So what we should know is angular acceleration is what we're looking for is alpha. And let's find things that we know. So it starts with an angular velocity of 40 radians per second. And then we have, it stops rotating after 20 revolutions. So that means the change in theta, it goes around 20 times, which is equal to 40 pi. Uh, and it stops after 20 revolutions. So we know omega final is equal to zero. So now let's look at these four variables that we found and look at our formula sheet and we see which one, which formula has all four of those. And we show that omega final squared is equal to omega initial squared plus 2 alpha change in theta. So this will be 0, 40 squared plus 2 alpha, which we're looking for, times 40 pi. And now let's do some algebra and find alpha. So that's going to be 40 squared. Divide by 2, divide by 40. Remember to put that pi in parentheses or it's going to give you some headaches. And then this should be like a negative 6.37. Because it's like slowing down, that means it needs to be in the opposite direction. I'm going to be talking about negatives and positives soon the next time. Um, but anyway, for now, it's fine if you have it as negative. Okay, or positive. Uh, part C. How far did the middle point of the bar travel? Okay, so now we're looking at the middle point of the bar. And we're trying to find what this arc length is after it has gone around 20 times. We should know that uh, d is equal to the change in theta times the radius. So that's the arc length. So what's change in theta? It went around 20 times, which is 40 pi. But what's the radius? You might be saying, oh, it's 4 meters. That's how long the bar is. But no, the radius is from the middle of it. So it should be half of that. So that's going to be, if it's 4 meters, it, this should be 2 meters. So it's going to be equal to 80 pi or 251 meters. All right, so I hope that, oops, 80 pi meters. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. We're going to keep doing kinematics next time, but we're just going to be doing slightly more challenging problems. All right, I'll see you with that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.